Shouts out to everybody that came over from the live stream. Give yourself a hand. Clap it up. Clap it up. The rest of y'all just kind of watching this on demand because y'all ain't got your notifications turned on. But that's all good, man. We got two tight ends in undrafted free agency. I like one. I don't like the other. And I'm going to tell you why uh, when we break down this film here today. All right. Sean McKeon and Charlie to um, Tongue of a low. Um, so yeah, we're gonna watch both those guys today. I decided to put both of them in one video, and of course, we're gonna have some bonus content after where we just kind of have a have a um, you know, have a little conversation, have a discussion afterwards, and all that. All right, so uh, hey man, let's run this for the cardio, man. Film time. So this is how we're gonna start it off. Sean McKeon. Um, so he is going to be your blocking tight end. I think that's interesting because if he was asked to come in and try to be a, a receiving tight end or a complete tight end, then he'll have some problems because he's got to compete with Blake Jarwin. I don't think anybody's beating out Blake Jarwin, but if you're going to come in as a blocking tight end, all you got to do is beat Dalton Schultz to make the team. Right. Um, Sean McKeon is probably going to, you know, run down and, you know, tackle people, kick off and all that kind of stuff. You know, he's probably going to play like punt team or whatever, just being an effort guy. But I think he's going to make a lot of his money just competing with Dalton Schultz. And y'all know we're not paying Dalton Schultz next year. So um, and Dalton coming out of Stanford was considered to be a blocking tight end. Well, I'm looking at Sean McKeon coming out of Michigan, considering him to be a blocking tight end also. But I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you what. Carol Baskin say cats and kittens. I'll tell you what. Well, I'll tell you what Dalton Schultz ain't never did. Dalton Schultz ain't never blocked Chase Young. Look at our tight end. Look at Sean McKeon block Boy, look at Sean McKeon blocking Chase Young. Now, let me just get y'all to relax a little bit, right? I don't want y'all to overreact and, you know, have y'all thinking that he's going to come out here and smoke DNs 24-7. I ain't saying that. <laughs> The Cowboy fan me just finds it interesting that when we play Washington this year, hey, man, just 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 put Sean McKeon on him and see what happens, right? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but Sean McKeon is a really, really good run blocker, and I am a fan of him. He engages with guys, and he runs his feet. That's what he does. Um, we're going to talk about some other things later and the types of run blocks that makes him versatile as a run blocking tight end. I'm going to give you a little bit more nuance in that conversation later. But uh, take a look at Right here, he's at the uh, he's at the end of the line of scrimmage. Right here, uh, they're in a the two tight end set, one tight end set, two tight end set. Yeah, they got two tight ends out here. So hey, if Mike McCarthy's gonna run some two tight end stuff, and we're just gonna put two blockers out there, that's probably gonna be Blake Bell and your second blocking tight end. Is that gonna be um, is that gonna be Dalton Schultz? We don't know. Could it be Sean McKean? <laughs> We'll see, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's take a look here. This is what I mean by him blocking in, you know, different block types or from different platforms or whatever. Right. So we saw him kind of like zone block. We saw him reach block or whatever. Um, so, hey, are we going to like like can we pull him? Sure, we can pull Sean McKeon and he kick the front side linebacker, whatever, number 20, and he kick people and dig them out the hole. Sure. Absolutely. Mr. Wolf, he can do that. Um and I think that's going to be another interesting conversation to have. Like, how are we going to ask him to block as a tight end? Like I said, I don't want him blocking defensive ends. But the more you can do, the more likely chance you have to make yourself relevant on this offense. You see what I mean? Uh, Sean McKeon is in the backfield here, kind of like a, you know, like a F back or, you know, maybe, you know, maybe like a wing. He'll probably be a little close to the line if he was like a wing guy. But fullback, whatever. Sure. Put him right here. Put him in the backfield. Let him rock. <laughs> Let him get in the line of scrimmage and just dig people out, man. I see a lot of different. He's a versatile blocker, man. A lot of different types of of blocking schemes, a lot of different types of blocking maneuvers that he's pulling off. And I'm a fan of it. And he's moving people. That's a DN right there. That's a DN right there. Now, let me temper your expectations because I don't fully think he's going to be out here blocking defensive ends. That just wouldn't be good for business. But the, the the handful of defensive ends I've seen him blocking, he's done pretty okay at it. And this this Ohio State right here. He's not beating up on, you know, doctors and lawyers. These are football players that he's blocking. Um, and for the most part, he's he's beating up on Chase Young because, you know, it's run game or whatever. Y'all know how I feel about Chase Young in the run game. So that could be something. Do I think he's going to line up and beat Chase Young in the passing game? I don't think that's going to be the case. Um Let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens here. Reaching Chase Young, reach blocking Chase Young, getting them up out of here. Goodness. 
<laughs> Goodness. Sean McKeon lined up at the tight end right here. I'm enjoying it, man. I like blockers. I like blockers. I like is he pass blocking Chase Young? Is he pass blocking Chase Young? What are we doing? What are we doing here? That's a secret weapon. That's why he on his team. See, Mike McCarthy know what he's doing. Jason Garrett would have never did it. Jason Garrett would have never found the only tight end that was able to block Chase Young and to get him on our team knowing that Chase Young going to be playing us twice a year. Chase Garrett would have never. <laughs> Y'all see my tight end right here? I'm really excited about Sean McKeon in his exact, um, you know, role that we carve out for him. Hey, don't get in my comment section asking me, well, Vach, how many passes he going to catch this year? None. Two. <laughs> A half. He might tackle somebody on kickoff or something. But he, he's just not generally impressive as a route runner, impressive as a pass catch. I don't think he has the speed to do it. And don't be the Michigan fan that goes in my comments here. Like, well, Vach, he ran a, a 4 5 40 at his pro day. I don't care. He ain't fast on film, player. So we did film on one tight end. I, f I felt like we might as well watch some film on the other one. And I'll tell you what, it's hard to find some film on Portland State. Portland State film is kind of like Bigfoot, you know? I mean, you kind of know he exists, but hey, you know what I'm saying? So Charlie T. T. Charlie T. Let's call him Charlie Portland. <laughs> Charlie Portland State. Um, So him as a tight end, I am a lot less excited about. Um, you know, you can, of course, go to different Portland State games and you can uh, watch the full versions of it if you want to watch, you know, Charlie play. I wasn't the biggest fan of Charlie doing that, but um, I wasn't going to show it on here because, um, you know, college football Illuminati can get me up out of here. But you can indeed watch some Charlie Portland State film on your YouTube if you go look for it. Charlie Portland State wasn't that impressive to me. He wasn't that impressive at Senior Bowl practices. Plus, if you go watch the actual Senior Bowl game, I don't, I don't even think I noticed him. I don't even think I noticed him. So... You could take that with whatever grain of salt you would want to to you know take it with, but uh, Charlie, Charlie didn't do it for me. And the only reason I'm putting him in this video is because somebody's gonna ask me, "Yo, Vach, can you make a film on him?" Vach, what's your opinion on the other tight end? And uh, Vach doesn't have an opinion on the other tight end. I will say him and Sean McKeon as receiving tight ends, I think they're very similar as receiving tight ends. But I don't think Sean McKeon is a good receiving tight end, just like I don't think Charlie Portland State is a good receiving tight end. But the one thing that, you know, keeps that puts Sean over the edge, right? The one thing that puts Sean over the edge is that Sean is a really, really good blocker fantastic um, blocking tight end. So I think that's going to keep him alive, but I don't think Charlie necessarily got that in him. But, hey, so if y'all want to hang around for the bonus conversation content, you can hang around and do so. If y'all want to leave because you just wanted to see the film, that's fine. Y'all ain't got to hate on my bonus, but uh, follow me on Twitter, V-O-C-H-L-O-M-B-A-R-D-I, and um, hit the sub button and like this and all that. But get out of here if you don't want to hang around for the conversation. Now, um, so like I said, where are we at in terms of our tight ends? We know Blake Jarwin is going to be like the man. And what I, what I'm kind of digging about this team, man, is that we didn't necessarily, you know, use big, um, draft capital to go get a tight end. You know, it was a lot of tight ends in this, in this class class this year. And I do think the tight end class as a whole was kind of whack, um, but I think there were some teams that kind of drafted tight ends in, in, in day two, and I think that was a mistake. But for the most part, what we saw was a lot of tight ends flying off the board in day three. So that just kind of gives you an idea of what the tight end class is like um, this year in the draft. But it depends on where you get them. It depends on where you get them. And I'm glad that we didn't spend a fifth-round pick or something to go get a tight end because we ended up getting Bradley and I. We used the other fifth-round pick to move up to um, go get Tyler, uh, Tyler Biotish. If we would have gotten a tight end, then they wouldn't have been better than Tyler or Bradley. So I'm happy that we were able to, um, you know, keep our draft picks and to make moves in the undrafted land. Right. Um, they were saying that we had some some draft grades that we had seven out of 15 of the free agents that we had. Seven of them had had draftable grades. So if we have more picks, we would have drafted those guys. I think Sean McKeon is a guy that had a draft grade on him because you can see a clear role for him. Like you can see the clear abilities in him. He just he just probably wasn't good enough to be drafted there. If it was eight rounds, you could probably take him there. Um, but Charlie, 
I don't think Charlie necessarily had a uh, had a draft grade on him. He has a very noteworthy name because I remember us talking about him. But, you know, as the process goes on, a lot of these names that we uh, that we recognize that are somewhat familiar to us, they don't always stack up and last the longest because, you know, things happen, man. Things, things happen. But um, but that's just that, though. So for us to be able to not use any draft capital at all to be able to get two tight ends and bring them in and put them in this, you know, in this tight end competition or whatever, you know, it's basically getting it for the cheap, getting it for the steal. You know what I mean? Uh, Blake Jarwin. I don't even remember us drafting Blake. What was Blake Jarwin? Like what? I don't remember when we got him. Uh, Blake Bell was free agency. And like I said, Dalton Schultz was a um, fifth round pick. Six round pick, something like that. I don't know. So, what does the battle look like, right? What is the how is the depth chart going to end up playing out? Well, I think there's a handful of um, there's a handful of people on this roster, and I think one of my callers on one of my other live streams said it. There's a handful of people on this roster um, that have been blessed into the system, right? They're blessed into the system, basically saying like, "Hey, these are Jason Garrett's guys, but we're gonna treat you like stepchildren until you prove yourself." Okay, I think Blake Jarwin is good. I think Blake Jarwin is good. Blake Bell was brought in. Un- Blake Bell was brought in under this administration. Say that five times fast. He was brought in under this administration, but Dalton Schultz was not. Dalton Schultz was a Jason Gary guy. We got him in the fourth round to make it even worse. My bad. I just looked that up. So Dalton Schultz being a um a fourth round pick. I don't think he's gonna be here very long, man. I don't think he's uh I don't think he's uh, gonna be here now. Is he a guy that you cut? Possibly, because I definitely don't don't think he's a guy that you drop some money on to to bring back. I think Blake Bell was brought here to block Blake Bell from Kansas City that we got in free agency. I think Blake Bell was 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 brought here to block because we don't want Dalton Schultz here to block. So in my opinion, Bell is my second tight end. You know, Jarwin of of course is the number one guy, the pass catcher, but. When we're looking at tight end number three is Dalton Schultz, Dalton Schultz versus these other guys. There's another guy on our roster, Cole's weird H word. <laughs> I forgot. He's probably another guy that's that's you know going to get cut up and move around. But um, do I see Charlie beating any of those guys? I don't see it, man. I don't see it. They're basically training camp guys. Charlie T and Cole H. Those are going to be the guys that's uh, probably going to be you know you know kicked out the club. But Hey, I tell you what, we either going to carry four tight ends, in which it makes sense to me because tight ends play a lot of kicking game stuff. We're either going to um, keep four tight ends or Sean McKeon is going to take Dalton Schultz's job and we're only going to run three. That's just my little thoughts, opinions, and predictions. You know what I'm saying? So that's just that, man. Tight end is normally boring for me to talk about. Um, unless they're established already, unless they're in our system or, or, you know, like a TJ Hawkinson guy that's like really, really good. So I really don't necessarily like to talk about tight ends very much, but I think Cole McKeon was worth having that conversation about. So, um, what's my next film session? I'm probably going to try to break down Rondell Carter, man. He's a pass rusher from James Madison. So we're going to take a look at him, see what he was talking about. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Walsh and the Peace Whiskey, man. Till next time. Salute. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.